Okay, we're gonna go meet Summer and work on her quest. Wait, oops, I went to the wrong place. Right. That's where I need to be. Oops. Okay, we have arrived at the mountain. Let's go meet Summer. Summer says, we're here. What a nice quaint place. In the view, well, it can't be beaten, can it? Yes, this would be perfect. See a little promontory promen uh, about that cliff there. Just go ahead, I'll meet you there. How will I do it? Don't worry, I'm, I'm sure I'll manage to snag my way up. And we're with Summer again. And she last says, I don't watch my touch, have I? I might be old, but I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. And beating younglings in a climbing race has always been a specialty of mine. But enough of this, let's focus on the matter at hand. This lesson, as you might have guessed, will be a little bit special. Up to now, we focused on the proper care of plants and crops. But now I, I think it's time to concentrate on the proper care of one's mind. Sunlight and music were the tools of the former. Well, for the latter, our tool will be the act of meditating. That's specifically why I brought you here. See this boulder? It hasn't been consecrated for nothing. Powerful spiritual energies flow through the area. I know, I know, it might seem strange. The cult, even, but just humor me. First things first, sit down next to me, just like this. Alright, your turn. Meditation Stella is an affair of wholeness, of wholeness and of oneness. A lot of novices believe wrongfully that meditating is the pursuit ouch, of an empty mind. But the mind is not empty, Stella. It's a beast, savage and untamed, violent and caring, loving and destructive, hateful, curious, scared, a ball of frayed nerves. Much like the dragon, it cannot be controlled. Must be allowed to, must be allowed to roam free. My father also lived with this tormented creature of a different kind, perhaps. He chose to fight it, tried to muscle it down into submission, to mark it under the auspice of violence, and mostly to silence it. He thought that nothingness was the solution. But the dragon is indomitable. If I had left my father a broken man. Let your mind wander, Stella. Gently, like you would a scared kitten. Let it smell the grass. Let it notice the wind flowing through your hair. The heat radiating from the stone behind you. Rhythmic breaking of the waves below. Let your spirit penetrate all things, not to make them yours, but to make yourself theirs. Be one and be whole, but keep being. Summer says, There you are. Seems like my lesson had quite the influence. You were up there for hours. I just have to stretch my legs at some point. Oh, what are you saying? A vision? Of course. You're a spirit fairer after all. The mystical energies of this world are bound to affect you in mysterious ways. I'm sure there are other such areas of power. If you find them, be sure to take time to, the time to meditate. Perhaps more visions will rain down upon your mind. You know, Stella, while you were up there, I tried to do some thinking. I wanted to prepare for our next lesson. There's still so much to teach, but I couldn't think. My mind was uneasy. Or you see, I too had a vision. A gift from the universe. It's the dragon, Stella. I felt him creeping slowly towards me. I thought I had some grand purpose to accomplish before he would swallow me whole. But now I realize that the dragon hasn't crept much at all. 
He has kept up with me for quite a while now. And ignoring it won't do me any good. Um, let's go, shall we? Alice is confused and says, what is this place? Oh, who are you? What am I? Oh, oh sorry, I was distracted. I'm alright, I'm fine. Yes, yes, I'm sure you're... Just carry on with your day. Scared. I thought that you had left. I'm feeling tired. We're on our way home, aren't we? Tell me when you're there. It's gonna be hard. She reminds me a little of my Oma. Oh, oh Annie, we're there, aren't we? Can we go now? Mm. Alright then. says, what a wonderful scenery. Did you find this place all by yourself, Annie? You'd gone exploring earlier, hadn't you? Always such an adventurer, you. I'm so proud of you. The trees are quite marvelous. Eugene will be so mad to have missed that. Perhaps he'll be able to take some time off next summer. Yes, let's let's return to here. I feel like I could stay I could stay here forever. Mm. You haven't told me about school recently. Is everything still going well? And your grades are they mm. Oh, of course you graduated a long time ago. I'm sorry, I don't know how I got this confused. but I um, favored Oma over her, but fuck, I miss her. Alice says, you're, you're not Annie, are you? Yes, of course, I, I guess I've been rather forgetful recently. See your father. Tell him about the trees, won't you? I'm sure he'll be excited to come with us next year.
I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. Summer says I'm getting cold all of a sudden. I think I might just be growing a bit tired. Maybe I'm not rested enough yet. I'll just take a little me time and then we can continue our lesson. I'm excited about the next steps. Making some fantastic progress, I maybe. Don't give up. I think I'm gonna skip ahead here in a moment to um to the island and then we'll continue on in a moment. Hello again. Maybe. There we go. Anything else covered? It is asleep still. Okay, cool. Is it just the two of them now? Time has come, my friends. Let's trample the thorns in inequity. Let's burn the tangling ropes of low wage employment. Mm -hmm. Let's tear down the golden walls of the upper class. I can't read this. I don't have my glasses. Does that say walls or whales? Walls. Yeah, I need to put my glasses on. Hang on. I can't see shit. Alright. Ow. Okay. Your conditions here have been appalling. It's time for you to mm -hmm. revolt. Let's show this capitalist pig that it's your work that creates wealth and value. Your work that makes him a profit. And he is the one living off your backs. And everybody starts shouting, let's break his knees and more days off. And I miss the rest of it because it went by too quickly. Um, the spirit says, do not despair, my friends. Together we can reverse this unjust stream of enrichment. Together we can finally give the power back to the mm -hmm. working class. Power you deserve and wealth you should benefit from. Time to claim what is rightfully yours, my friends. I want designer sunglasses. Extra 10 minutes to have a lunch break. <laughs> this is hilarious. I hate that capitalism is in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad somebody's pointing it out. That's great. She says, hello there. You've come to join our protest? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good, come on in. I even have a little something to ask of you, ask you since you've just arrived. You'll find up there the CEO of this company. He's fled to his office and won't mm -hmm. come out. Coward. See if you can convince him to face his employees and have an honest dialogue with them. We won't budge before the conditions have improved. <laughs> and CEO spirit guy says, go away. What do you want? Get away from here. I've done nothing wrong. I am the one being threatened. As if three fewer days of vacation a year was a big problem for them. I mean, they should have thought twice before starting a family, right? Oh. I'm not responsible for their poor life choices. Nor for their lack of higher qualifications. And they should be happy I've got... I've not delocalized the production. Oh. What will I have to do next? Pay them medical insurance too? Why would I pay them if they oh. don't work? It doesn't make a difference if they have a broken arm or whooping cough. Man, that reminds me. Which um, state is it right now where the... They've decided they're going to cut health insurance um, to the teachers that are striking. That's what this reminds me of. That's bullshit, by the way. There's no sense in that. Anyway. Um, CEO guy says, it doesn't make a difference if they have a broken arm or whooping cough. They still don't work when they're not here. And 
back down here to the spirit saying what mm -hmm. we won't move not without having negotiated Okay, back up we go. Ooh, hello. Chest. Wonton soup. Eat. Oh. Anyway. CEO says, they just want to negotiate, you say. Look, it's getting hot in here, and I'm getting oh. hungry too. Okay, you can tell them I'll reverse my decision on the vacations. I'll wait for you here. Bro. The other spirit says, well, nope, not enough. Plus 20% increase in wages and full compensation for medical expenses, as well as another week of vacation and 5% on capital gains. Hot damn, lady. Siosa asks, what did she say? Oh. But, but, damn, I've really got to pee. Okay, okay, oh. whatever they want. Tell them they'll get whatever they want, but they have to stop calling me Mr. Moneybags. Got it? Okay, go now. I have to find the key to this door. Mm -hmm. She says, he agreed to everything you said? Wonderful. You're one hell of a negotiator, mm -hmm. Munchkin. I like you already. Look, my work is done here, thanks to you. I probably could embark with you on this fancy mm -hmm. boat of yours. I can't wait to rest my old bones in a cozy home and have you by my side, Munchkin. See you there. The <coughs> tool says, look at that fuse box. The glass is all busted up. That's not up to code. If I were their union leader, believe you me, I'd make that greedy boss eat his own shoes. That's fair. have to say. <coughs> she says, took you long enough. Okay. Woof. That felt funny. You'd think I would have seen everything at my age. Not sure I liked it, though. It sure beats being an impersonal hooded blob. Those capes are really mm -hmm. scratchy. Ah, feels good to breathe fresh air mm -hmm. again. Or, I didn't say that right. Time for me to stretch my legs for a bit. Mm, I'm hungry as well. You know what? Mm -hmm. Would you be a deer and fix me a little meal? That would be marvelous. Thank mm -hmm. you, Munchkin. Okay, you can leave now. Since I've been on that island, you tend to lose track when you fight for mm -hmm. the workers' rights. We should cap catch up on the latest gossip, don't you think? Oh, don't get me wrong, I don't really like gossip, but we need to stay informed. Mm -hmm. In case important things happen. And I don't know just the right person. An old friend of mine has been roaming mm -hmm. the seas. She could probably tell us what's been going on. Are you game for a little adventure? Well, it's not like you have a choice. She should be around. She's gained a bit of weight recently, but don't tell her that. She's always making a scene when someone mentions her appearance. Mm -hmm. Let's go meet her. Hurry up now. I still don't know your name, lady. You still haven't introduced yourself. <gasps> I forgot. Oh, it's Astrid. That's right. Boy, bitch, you haven't even introduced yourself. What the fuck's your name?
Said she's here. here. Ah, there we are. I'm happy to see her, Munchkin. She's always been a kind person, and we go way back, me and her. But I've got to tell you, last time I saw each other, things didn't go that well. She might still hold a bit of a grudge against me. It's not my fault if I say things as they are. You don't always make friends by being honest, and you might even lose a few. But we're old now, so canoe under the bridge, as they say. Follow my lead. Okie dokie. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Olga! You haven't changed a bit, old friend. Still so green. Astrid! My dear old Astrid, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see that you're out of your old shell. Would you happen to owe... Would you happen to owe this to the charming young lady there? You are the new spirit bearer, aren't you? Albert was telling everyone that Sharon had been replaced. Stella, isn't it? Well, I think he borrowed my hairbrush and never gave it back. Oh, no. When I think... I think he borrowed my hairbrush and never gave it back. Oh well. I hope this new job of yours doesn't weigh too heavily on your frail shoulders. Wow, oh, I just went through three different voices there. You can count on me to give you a hand, my little lady. Oh wow, I just went this. <laughs> okay. So tell me, Astrid, what brings you here? As you said, I'm back in the world. First thing I wanted to do was pay you a little visit. You know, to catch up on things. How are you and your sisters doing? Oh, you know, I mean, I'm still focusing on her studies. And Mash has picked up a few, a new hobby. Knitting! She says it keeps her stress levels low. Not that she's ever done anything really stressful, mind you. But she crafts nice little mitts for the winter. You should pay them a visit as well. Oh, and Astrid. Yes? You won't believe what I heard the other day. What? Miss Shrewsbury is pregnant! Again! What? I can't believe it. Yes. And you know what? Bob is not the father. No. You're kidding me. Incredible. Oh, well, she always knew how to lure them boys. And speaking of boys, I heard Giovanni's back. And from a reliable source at that, Gio Giovanni's back? Who told you that? Where? When? Well, if you're interested, I can go dig deeper. But are you? Interested? Mm -hmm. Yes! Uh, no. No, I I don't care what he does. I don't want to know. He can frolic all he wants. As you wish. But you know what? I'll go check my sources and I'll write back to you. Just in case. Now that you're traveling in good company, I know where to find mm -hmm. you. Sure, okay, but no rush. I'm happy Stella found me and I want to spend some time with her and her crew for now. Mm -hmm. Olga dear, could you show her what you can do? I'm certain your help will be greatly appreciated. But of course, and on with the main attraction. Come here, little lady. I'm a very old being, but I'm not very wise. Yes, a bit like Astrid. But there are some things I can do. My specialty is patience and spinach puffs, but we won't talk about that right now. If you look carefully, there are three receptacles on my back. You plant logs, ores, or rocks in them, and then you wait. You wait for me to come back to the surface, and when I back the rocks or logs you use will have become a tree or a mining rock. Isn't that nice? I can't tell you what my secret is, but you have to know one thing. It's normal if they smell like strawberries, okay? Alright, hop on my back, little lady. <clears throat> See, I like the idea of spinach puffs. This giant-ass turtle lady making spinach puffs sounds like a great thing. I love spinach, and I love pastries. So a savory spinach puff pastry sounds really good right about now. Man, I wish I had some aluminum. Turtle Lady Olga says, Stella, 
Are you done? Yes, I am. Wonderful. I'll go back underwater for some time. Don't worry. I'll free a bird as soon as what you've planted can be fully harvested. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and your passengers, Stella. Bye now. See you soon. I like her. Neat. Asher says, what a bust. She had a lot to say, didn't she? Running her mouth like that. She's always been chatty, this one, but I don't judge. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but her eyes are a bit scary. Soothing and kind, for sure, but mm -hmm. scary. I think she should talk to someone about this, but enough about her. Thanks a lot for having brought me to, to her munchkin. It's mm -hmm. really appreciated. There's always so much going on, I can't get enough of it. Also, what she said about that Giovanni mm -hmm. character, well... Mm, you, you know what? Never mind. We'll have ample time to talk about this later. I don't want to bore you with this for now. See you later, Stella. <coughs> Atul says, is summoning me saying, where's Summer? Have you seen Summer today? I think, don't, I don't, blah, blah, blah. I think she didn't get up this morning. I thought she's usually up at first light. Something seems wrong with her house. Maybe Albert the shipwright could help us. Would you look at that? That's what I call a foundry. Do you feel that heat, Munchkin? Do you smell these fragrances of molten metals and heavy machinery? This is where magic happens. We're going to make some beautiful things in here. Let's go inside so I can explain how it works. Lady, I've been working on this thing for like weeks now. In game weeks. <coughs> what a machine! Oh my, Stella, this is the first class foundry you've got here. Even I myself couldn't have done better. Simply stunning. Let me run you through the basics. This is a complex machine, and you have to be careful mm -hmm. around it. First, you have to load ore in the furnace. I know, lady. Then you have to throw coal in the burner to power it. This machine will then reach its working temperature. Then whatever ore you've deposited in the furnace will be smelted into ingots. The bellows on each side of the furnace, or the bellows on each side of the furnace, will make the heat go up. Each metal will behave differently, but once the right temperature is reached, mm -hmm. the fusion starts. You'll have to make sure the temperature remains at the right level, but below it, the process simply stops and above it, well, you don't want to see this happen, Munchkin. And that's it. I've told you all you needed to know. Have at it. Oh, we're gonna, I want to finish Summer's quest over here. Okay, Albert. <coughs> well, I don't know. If I don't know that face, it's about that house, the green and brown one, right? Has some sort of problem with it, don't you? Yeah, I can see it from a mile away. Listen, I know my job. Me and the boys, we're real professionals, and it's not often that we criticize another worker's craftsmanship. But that house, oh, wow. It had to be the worst job I've ever seen. Gee, thanks, bud. So consider this a lesson. Don't just trust any old amateur. Weird. Always good for professionals, so tell me, what complaints does your passenger have? What? She's sleeping? Oh, of course. That bald head of hers is very sensitive to temperature changes. Imagine how cold she must be. Not mentioning her dry and sa scaly skin. No, no, she needs a temperature and humidity control system. Luckily, that place was so shoddily designed that there's ample cracks for wiring and electronics. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Some plans and schematics for a nice all-in-one HVAC system. Pro quality. Call it a courtesy. After all, how can you repay your debt if your boat falls to pieces? <laughs> Gee, thanks, buddy. Copper and glass. You like not stand in the way of. You 
Oops. And Asher says, mm -hmm. Great work. Oh, Stella, how I wished all the metal workers I've met were as gifted as you. You look so small and weak, but you danced around. The smelter like a veteran forge master. I'm so proud of you. This is a splendid machine, and I'm sure you'll put it to good use. I'll even indulge myself and use it from time to time, if you're okay with that. <coughs> I mean, yeah, it doesn't get as much use as it probably should. Build it. Why are you not letting me build it? Oh, I don't have enough glimpse, that's why. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> okay. I actually made, did pretty well on glimpse. Got about, what, 700... teens, somewhere in there. Okay, let's go check on Summer. <clears throat> she said, still fussy. Oh, Stella. I think I might have overslept a bit. How long have I been sleeping? What? That much? Hibernating, you say? Well, I guess it was bound to happen. I might have been ignoring what my body was trying to tell me. A bad habit of mine. Thank you, Stella, for taking such good care of me.
I forgot how long trees take. Stella, they're back. So much stronger than I ever thought they could be. These visions, I see them now even as I am awake. The reefs have turned into wafts of ethyl scented smoke, and the rotten fruit formed into the eye of the dragon, virtuous and sickly, and a coil of arduous rust. Another dragon has woken, and he scares me. But suffering cannot be allowed. You would agree, I'm certain. Let's go help it, shall we? This random spirit says, No, thank you. I don't want to buy your magazine subscription or whatever you're selling. <laughs> Next one says, Hi there. <laughs> Third one says, Where is my brother? He should be here. There's that fucking owl. This red spirit says, Now, where could she be? Oh, what impeccable timing. I'm in dire need of assistance. I can tell from your friendly and familiar face that you are undoubtedly the helpful type. Listen, I am looking to complete the set of five traditional wood prints. They date from the Oshiro period and, as such, are invaluable. I have found four of them, but alas, the last one eludes me. I am certain it is in this very village. Furthermore, I am absolutely positive that it was recently in the possession of the local shopkeeper, Theodore. But he refuses to even acknowledge its existence. What an irksome little man. Raccoon. Tanuki. Uh -oh. Whatever he is. But with your help. Yes, with that sweet little smile of yours and generally non-threatening uh -oh. attitude. Well, I'm sure you can schmooze your way into acquiring that last precious piece. That would be the last missing piece of this slippery puzzle. Oh, go ahead, Skipper. I can wait. Talking to the theater. Oh, hello there, customer. Is our catalog not to your satisfaction? Are you interested in some specialized items? Oh, a wood print, did you say? Yes, yes, I know it. It's that my special stock for an eternity, and then suddenly everyone was looking for it. At first, it was this pedantic person, very rude. And worse, they were haggling on everything. I didn't even tell them of the print, gave them some junk instead. And then later, this giant walrus lady came in and demanded that I sell it to her. The thought crossed my mind to start a bidding war. She offered me some serious coin for it. That lady, let me tell you, she was loaded. Anyway, that's all I know about it. I can't help with you with the print, but feel free to browse my wares. I do need some seed. <coughs> oh, well. 
Okay, I can't afford seed now. <laughs> can't believe I just did that. I should have only bought one and then bought seed. Fuck. Okay, talking to the red spirit again. Ah, you're back. Did you manage to get the missing print? No, it was already sold, but how? Wait, is there a competing art collector roaming around? A walrus lady, you said? Of course, of course it was her. Oh, that horrid woman. That dim-witted, egotistic, patronizing charlatan. She calls herself the collector, if you can believe it. She doesn't even collect anything. I'm sure she bought it. the print only to spite me. I should have never told her about my collection. That ugly ass sack face. Well, I'm not one to wave away competition. The ugly witch isn't hiding. And hiding from you. I don't specifically know why, but the news of a new spirit fair made her skitter away like a puny cockroach. How fitting. Yes, yes, you're the spirit fair. Tell me something I don't know. She should have known better than to tell me the location of her hideout, though she's hiding at these coordinates. Negative 150 by 150. Uh -huh. Pay her a visit, would you? And when you see her show her this figurine, she'll know. Believe me, she will know. This? Oh, do not worry. It's just some junk Theodore gave me. And we now have a ceramic figurine. We're about to have a flash here again in a second. Well, maybe not. I went into the eclipse zone. I thought there would have been a flash. Guess not. Alright, thank you, Alex. Appreciate the... <clears throat> Appreciate the shortcut. Lucky for you, a tool I've... Wait. A tool. Oh my gosh. Did I just now get... Okay. <sighs> a tool, and he's a craftsman. Got it. Anyway, here's your pork chops, bro. What? Pork chops? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm so excited. They look so damn tasty. And they are. Sprout your miracle, you hear that? Oh, this is just so good. 
Now I feel just a bit guilty. And I'm sorry you're running all these culinary errands for me. Look, there was this kid at work, Craig. We used to have these long and tight union negotiations. All-nighters. Everyone would be at a standstill. Everyone was so hungry and every restaurant was closed. I would send Craig on these endless 24-hour grocery store crawls for me. I would ask these impossible guests. Saffron, Subak, even Anise. I'm not sure if I said those right. It was something like 2 o'clock in the morning. Our goal was to make the tastiest chops in the world. A meal for everyone. Oh, on both sides of the table. To call the heads into a piece stomachs. The first part didn't always work. But everyone was always well fed. I don't know how he did it, but Craig would always find everything on my list. I would joke with him that he would have to break into people's houses to get this stuff. Jeez, maybe he did. I don't know how you did it, Sprout. You made it taste like home. Here's to you and Craig. Oh, casserole. I could have sworn the aluminum dragon was over here somewhere. I'm set over here to this lady's place and then we'll go look for the dragon. Maybe I can reveal it somehow. Negative 132 by 134. Okay. There he is. Time for the Illuminate Dragon. Let's go visit with Summer again. She says, oh, this. Something smells different, don't you think? Oh, as I thought. Just, just to help it, Stella. Um, hello? Don't you do it, bitch.
Um, hello? It's... I... I need some time, sorry. Bye, Mr. Aluminum Dragon. I miss Aluminum Dragon. <coughs> oh, wait, Summer's... Summoning us again, she says, Stella. Stella the Dragon. I thought it was getting tamer. It seemed like we finally learned to coexist. To manage, at least, but it's really getting stronger, isn't it? Well, you know what it means as well as I do. It's time for me to go. Please, when you can, bring me to the Everdoor. I'll be fine. Okay, so I'm actually going to end this video here, and I'll continue with um, Gustav's quest and finish taking Summer to the Everdoor in the next episode. You guys have a good one. Stay safe. <laughs>